Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis and getting into the week ahead, uh, zooming in a bit, um, it says it will be a busy week in the US with inflation report and retail sales data taking a central stage. Investors will also be looking at any signs of contagion in the financial sector sector sorry from the fallout of silicon valley bank elsewhere the european central bank um, will decide on the course of monetary policy and china will publish data on industrial production and retail sales finally uh, the unemployment rate will be released in the uk and australia and Q4 GDP growth in New Zealand. So those are the main things to kind of focus on. You can see the details um, in the paragraphs below as well. Just go to trading economics and it should be in the week ahead section. Let's get into some of the technicals and more fundamentals and um, starting off on the US dollar index and the dollar has had um, a lot going on recently. So let's get into that. So. There was uh, the jobs report that happened on Friday. So the U.S. payrolls tops estimates. Wages cool in mixed signal for the Fed. The so firms added 111,000 jobs last month, the 11th month above forecast, and the Fed picture muddied as central bank mulls bigger rate hikes. So let's read a couple of the uh, paragraphs here. U.S. Uh, payrolls rose in February by more than expected, while a broad measure of monthly wage growth slowed, offering a mixed picture as the Federal Reserve considers whether to step up the pace of interest rate hikes. And so it's a bit of a tricky one because you have jobs growing, or a lot of jobs, but inflation cooling and wage um, average hourly earnings, I think it was that that cooled. And so um, the, the main threat at the moment is inflation. And so... Um, the Fed are, you know, are probably more likely to, if they see inflation coming down and measures of inflation coming down, then they are more likely to potentially look to do a smaller hike than a bigger hike. And so, um, but it's a bit 50-50 at the, you know, um, at the time anyways. Non-farm payrolls increased uh, 311,000 after 504,000 um, um advance in January the Bureau of Labor of Statistics report showed on Friday the unemployment rate ticked up to 3.6 as the labor force grew and monthly wages rose at the slowest pace of the year so uh, again the headline figure is really um, you know talking about payrolls but you know the um, the outlook now of, of course is muddied or overshadowed by uh, as SVB collides with jobs reports so the biggest bank failure since 2008 could keep Fed hikes measured and payroll reports beat estimates though monthly wage gains cool as we've already know so uh, a hard job just got harder for the Federal Reserve after the biggest US bank failure in 2000 and since 2008 um, overshadowed another strong payroll report officials weighing in February's job state have boosted the case for a half base um, half point rate hike this month uh, must now also consider if the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank gives ground for caution uh, that they cannot ignore and so um, the, the markets and banking sector turmoil will be a strong argument in favour of a 25 basis point rather than a 50 basis point um, hike, said Stephen Stanley, chief US economist for Santander US capital market. At a minimum, it should serve as a reminder to policymakers that they have implemented a lot of tightening over the last year and not all of the impact of those moves have yet shown themselves or shown themselves yet. Thus, it serves as a compelling reason to tread carefully because by hiking rates, the um, the effect of hiking rates is obviously um, high, um, raising borrowing and lending uh, costs and um, that tends to contract the economy. And so uh, one of the failures um, uh, triggers I guess for SVB as I understand was to do with uh, the bonds on their balance sheet and the bond prices and as the Fed has hiked rates uh, bond yields uh, were going higher and bond prices were actually going uh, lower and so um, uh, with bond prices obviously going lower and if you've got bond, bonds on your balance sheets then um, you know uh, it's basically devaluing um, you know your balance sheet and what you've got right so um, there was a triggering 
and this is just a basic understanding of, of it it's, it's quite complex but ultimately um you know the hiking of rates has an effect on um you know the financial markets and this is basically one of them and uh, it's obviously triggered um a bank uh, to actually, uh, you know, uh, fail. And so um, the bank, uh, the Federal Reserve have to take the fact that into account when looking to, you know, potentially hike rates and how much they hike rates as, you know, those rate hikes work um, their way into the economy because they tend to lag, you know, by maybe, you know, six, nine, 12 months. And so um, at the moment, the dollar index, um, I would assume, you know, with the contagion, you know, that's going on, the finance, the financial uh, risk off that's going on, I would expect, um, you know, the dollar to weaken at least or an event to probably trigger the dollar uh, to weaken. Um, and so if you do want to get, you know, short on this, um, on the, on the dollar, you really looking at um, maybe some sort of pullback into you know a, a decent zone, and then uh, looking for um, a short trade as long as that risk off maintains and it's being triggered by um, you know the SVB and uh, what is going on in the states. And so um, moving on to the dollar index, I'm mean, sorry, the uh, dollar yen. You would expect the yen to actually strengthen. Um, in a risk off environment, yes, the Fed are hiking rates, which is typically, um, uh, you know, uh, appreciates a currency, but with strong risk off sentiment, you know, coming into the market potentially, if, you know, the Fed, uh, you know, government don't step in to, um, to ease fears and, um, you know, and, and uh, somehow uh, make depositors, uh, you know, happy and give their money back. Uh, you're probably going to see uh, the, the, the dollar yen look to uh, probably sell off. And as we know, there's no um, demand zone in the world that or supply zone in the world that's going to hold um, because ultimately price is driven by uh, valuation and valuation is derived from understanding what gives a currency or an asset class its value. And in this case, um, you know, the, uh, the dollar is being revalued based off of, you know, more of economic problems in the short term, at least in a risk off environment, uh, rather than, um, you know, the monetary policy, it looks like anyway. So Monday is going to be very interesting. But um, if you do want to get short on the dollar yen, looking for any kind of price pullback down into um, uh, into any kind of lower zones. And if you're looking to buy the dollar, um, again, you'd have to really see a kind of turnaround in, in risk sentiment. Uh, for you to want to be a buyer, I'd probably say the first zone is going to be maybe the one three ones, one thirties. Uh, dollar Swiss, pretty much similar to dollar yen in terms of risk off sentiment. So at the moment you've got uh, this going on, and I think with the Swiss franc wanting to be, oh, I say wanting to be, but is the risk off currency or a risk off currency of choice you're really looking at a pullback into a zone before looking at getting short um, again will this will this demand zone um, hold it's going to be very very hard to say and again you'd really want the, the, the trigger to be more the fact that they've um, you know the US government have found a way to, to ease um, you know the financial markets fears but um, also as well, talking about, you know, the financial markets, uh, bond yields uh, plunge most since 2008 as traders rethink the Fed path. And so, again, you know, U.S. Uh, two year yields fall sharply 30 basis points on year end rate cut wager now. And so financial contagion fears outweigh uh, strong February uh, jobs data and so uh, government bond yields fell the most since uh, 2008 after US uh, bank failure spurred traders re to reassess the outlook for additional Federal Reserve hikes as shorter dated Treasury yields plummeted for the f uh, for a second day as traders reverted to price uh, pricing in a quarter point rate hike as the Fed's uh, at the Fed's March 20 uh, first 22nd meeting instead of a half point move the market also resumed pricing in a quarter point cut by the end of the year so again um, lots to really kind of think about and in fact I think there's something else as well this was actually quite interesting um, 
talking about traders brace for more market shocks after a week of wild swings and so um there was some there was a statistic right here it was it says beyond the impact of speculators past swings in treasuries on the scale of thursdays and fridays uh, hold worrying signals for the cross asset landscape and the u.s economy so data crunch by a bespoke investment group showed that nearly 50 in nearly 50 years of history two-year treasury yields have posted a two-day decline of 45 basis points 79 times with two exceptions in 1987 and 1989 all of these episodes were either during or within six months of a u.s recession so six months of a u.s recession right so um <laughs> those are pretty uh, um, uh high probabilities right and so you know you're looking at the the dollar at the moment you know against various risk assets like you know the swiss franc i think maybe well the bond traders are looking at repricing obviously the dollar um and the effect of those interest rate hikes and what they're having on the economy um and if obviously there are more banks that come out um, and more financial institutions come out as being uh very um more in, in trouble then um you're probably going to see the dollar start to sell off it's likely and then you're probably going to see uh you know the risk assets like the swiss franc and the yen uh, start to come into play uh you know when it comes to selling on the dollar and so um any pullbacks would be decent again uh, uh sell off or sell trades against the dollar but if again things start to sort themselves out i think the dollar could be a decent buy at these night this 91 area zooming out um you do have some zones from uh, 2021 which i don't know about these to be fair they are interesting and they are there but um it'd be difficult to trade i would probably rather look towards um uh waiting for a more of a reaction of those levels before looking at trying to sell but i think uh, this week potentially um coming down in terms of that 91 area 90 cent um 50 area could be decent for a buy but again that all depends on um you know what happens on the uh, on the sunday open monday morning uh dollar cad pretty much same thing i think the cad has been um typically a bit on the weaker side as they are a central bank that are not looking to hike rates anytime soon or at all they're on the holding uh, part part of the cycle and so you would have expected the dollar to continue obviously uh, appreciating against the uh, canadian dollar but with the risk of sentiment and the risk of sentiment originating in the states this is going to be a difficult trade to take i would assume that this would kind of put a cap on um the uh, the upside for the uh, US dollar so if you do want to be uh, long on that trade then I think that's pretty much what you're looking at if you're looking at any kind of buys then I think any move back down into that zone there especially the I think the lower end of that zone is going to be decent for a potential buy but again you'd have to really um, understand the uh, the fundamental side of things or the risk sentiment side of things for you to want to get involved in that level and a pull back into that zone before looking at getting long um new zealand dollar pretty much similar thing here and so you've got a nice actual uh, support and resistance in that area that prices is looking to bounce off of and uh, again there's some upside potential based off of just more risk um, off sentiment but again the risk off originating from the US so as the dollar starts to sell off you could see the potential for the New Zealand dollar to uh, um, appreciate but um, typically you would think that the, US, um, the New Zealand dollar is not really a pair or a currency that you really want to buy in a risk off environment but technically this is a really nice level and so if you do want to be a buyer right now it's decent technically you want to be a seller of the new zealand dollar then i would say probably around here let's uh, drag this down in fact that's where that supply zone is and then before looking at getting um before looking at getting short on the side of that level pound 
uh, dollar, pound dollar. Again, pound has uh, actually had some decent news uh, and continues to get have some decent news. Um, and uh, the surprise UK growth re rebounded means technical recession could be avoided. And so the UK economy grew faster than expected in January, though underlying volatility in the data means that the GDP is, effect is effectively flatlining. So lower gas prices mean that any recession is likely to be very modest now and may technically be avoided altogether. So that's uh, some positive coming out of the uh, of the UK. Uh, very surprising, by the way, because I thought um, you know the uh, UK economy would have uh, actually fared a lot worse. But um, in this environment, I think uh, the the dollar, if they can obviously sort certain things out uh, with regards to uh, SVB Bank, then for me, I would want to still my bias is still to the short side on that um, on that uh, pound dollar and even up into the one, uh, two, threes. But again, depending on how severe the uh, the, the risk of sentiment is, then um, actually, in fact, the pound could be a short-term uh, buy on any kind of pullbacks into, you know, demand zones down into here before looking at getting uh, long. The euro dollar, the euro dollar probably might start to go higher, in fact, um, and again, this is aided by, um, you know, the 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 the, the, the dollar uh, issues, but also as well, the ECB is seen taking rates to three point seven five percent peak as bond exit to quicken. So economists predict four more hikes finishing in July, and pace of quantitative tightening to be increased. Survey shows, and so that's all contributing to. Uh, the euro um, increasing in value so the european central bank will step up its fight against stubborn inflation by raising interest rates four more times and unwinding its five trillion euro uh, bond portfolio at a quicker pace according to a bloomberg survey of economists and so three hikes of 25 basis points each will follow the next uh, weeks all but certain half point move bringing the deposit rate to 3.75 in july uh, respondents said and so um, with the European Central Bank being quite hawkish I would actually consider this now and with the US um, uh, having the problems that it does I would I would assume that prices would continue to go higher so any pullbacks if you see any pullbacks down into just below that 105 area I do think in fact that could be a really good buying opportunity uh, for the uh, for the euro against the dollar with the uh, problems in the United States um, if you're looking to get short and buy the dollar then you're looking at this area right here it would be within that supply zone would be probably the best one of the one of the better areas to look for any kind of short trades and then you also got a supply zone right up top right here Supply. So this is obviously proven to be a an expensive area, and this was a bargain area for the euro as you've made higher highs, higher lows. So prices have come back down into that zone, and that's seen as a potential bargain. And hopefully, if you're looking to buy the euro, then that can continue going higher. Um, Aussie dollar. And again, in a risk-off environment, you would have expected the US, the US dollar, to really be the one to strengthen. But even with all the uh, the issues of risk-off and the Australian dollar, um, you know, weakening this week in terms of uh, the RBA's uh, dovish tone in the market, actually um, expecting a rate uh, ho uh, hold for the uh, RBA. Um, you haven't seen the uh, the Australian dollar sell off, so again, this could be an opportunity to potentially buy the Australian dollar against the um, the US dollar. Although it wouldn't be one of my uh, potential buys, I'm looking to buy or, or short the US dollar. I think the strongest pairs are going to be either the Swiss franc or the uh, the, the the yen. So, um, but technically, it's at a really nice area that I do like, and um, but I just don't like the. Uh, actual buying of the Australian dollar in a risk off environment. Um, but also as well, the the Australian dollar will be helped by 
uh, China uh, data. So if the data starts to come out really strong in China, then that Australian dollar should want to increase in value at least over the medium term. And then finally, we have gold and gold again reacting to the chaos in the market risk off uh, asset. We've seen prices, you know, come back saying it's last week. If prices come down into this zone here, you'll be a buyer of the uh, of gold. Then looking for you know some more upside potential, which is pretty much you know what's happened. Uh, could anyone have predicted the uh, um, SVB? Then um, then yeah, that would have been a really nice uh, trade. But um, this whole level itself was actually quite decent anyway. This has been a level where um, you know obviously the banks have been doing lots of business in and around this zone here. So the uh, one eighteen, uh, the eighteen sorry tens, the one the eighteen twenties to maybe the eighteen hundred somewhere around there was definitely previous historical um, you know, business level. And um, yeah, it seems like gold now. Uh, should benefit, especially like I said, in a risk off environment, you would have to expect prices of gold to continue to go uh, higher. Doesn't mean that it's going to go higher like that, of course. You know, prices could pull back before going higher, of course, but um, who knows, right? But ultimately, the path of these resistance at the moment, as long as there's turmoil in, in the financial markets right now, um, you know, owning gold is a great shout not financial advice of course anyways guys uh that's it for this week um i hope you have a great trading week remember to manage your risk and um yeah if you have any questions let me know and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can take care and speak to you all soon Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining why support and resistance zones are supply and demand zones. Now, many of you watching this video would have been under the impression due to uh, YouTube um, popular videos and Instagram and Facebook that actually support and resistance is different from supply and demand. And the only difference is really um, the way that you actually um, trade the zones. But uh, the support and resistance zones are actually past supply and demand zones. And I'm really going to get into it um, in this next uh, uh, maybe five, ten minutes. We have an example as well. I'll use probably gold, um, recent gold uh, analysis um to uh, really kind of highlight the point. So, uh, first of all, what we have to do is really understand, um, you know, supply and demand versus um, support and resistance. And again, like I said, it's just, it's just a difference in really how they approach. So what we have to do is, first of all, when we're looking at um, supply and demand is we're understanding uh, value. Right, so typically this is how traders will draw, or this is how I draw anyway, um, and understand supply and demand. Yeah, so supply and demand is higher highs and higher lows, where this area here is going to be an area of uh, demand. Because if we take this this first leg from this low, yeah, to this high, this is where demand started, yeah, and this is where supply comes in because prices cannot go past. You know a certain price point so let's say for example that's price and that's time when we're on a price chart yeah whatever price this is yeah and let's say for example it was five yeah at this point in time this was seen as an expensive area therefore prices couldn't make its way higher so then traders probably started selling taking profit there was more supply here than demand than buy orders yeah so this is where all the buy orders were more demand, more buy orders, prices go higher until the imbalance in supply and demand where there's more supply here, right? Traders not seeing this as an area where this is an absolute bargain area. They're seeing that as an, as an expensive area, right? This is expensive, yeah? And then profit taking, etc., goes on, yeah? Now, when prices start to fall, obviously there's more supply orders than demand orders but when you get um, another leg higher so many traders recognize this as higher highs and higher lows so buying starts here again yeah so more demand starts here buying and as prices make their way higher yeah when it goes past a previous expensive area yeah 
previous expensive area what was considered expensive here because we know that for a fact because prices couldn't push higher buyers weren't willing to buy at this you know this 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 price point whatever this price point is but if later on prices do do something like that yeah they go higher then this is then seen as this as, as a potential strong area of demand because this is where the origin of the move was in the same way that this was the origin of the move that made the move higher yeah so when we're looking at trading supply and demand it's always higher highs higher lows yeah this drop base rally rally base drop thing is is you know is something different when we're looking at price charts, it's always about higher highs and higher lows. This is what we need to determine. This is what makes sense, yeah? Um, so as new highs are made, yeah? The swing, the higher low, this whole area here becomes the strongest area of demand, right? Now, with support and resistance, how traders will trade support and resistance is pretty much similar thing where you get higher highs and higher lows and what traders will look at is a previous area yeah of what is known as resistance yeah and then looking for the uh, for a pattern here right so this was a previous expensive area here and so traders are now looking at trading the um, uh, the 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 under well, they were trading the underside of that and now looking to trade the uh, the other side of that because this is what resistance as we're taught should turn to what support yeah this is going to be support if obviously prices are actually supported but in anticipation of that. That's where traders are looking to trade. But if you actually now look at the similarities between support and resistance and supply and demand, it's just a case of we as supply and demand traders are trading down here. Yeah, at that area right there. So if we're looking at this being bargain area or the cheapest area and we know that to be true because buyers were buying and buying and buying so much so that even at a previous expensive area prices went to the upside yeah so this has to be the most recent bargain when traders when traders are looking at buying here they're actually not buying in the best place are they support doesn't always represent the best place to buy now it's the best place if it's part of your you know support and resistance strategy yeah but from a demand zone perspective and what we know to be true about you know what price is doing and showing us this cannot be the best area to buy if we're taking this higher low yeah and higher high and the higher high principle this is going to be this level of demand is going to be the best area yeah and when we think about what supply uh sorry support and resistance levels are they are actually just failed supply and demand zones so again going back to this area here if all we saw was this high and a pullback this is a supply zone or a supply level and then when prices come back to it yeah, so it didn't work here, but when prices come back to it, this was a failed supply zone that turns into a support area or what traders would term support. So it was failed supply, failed supply. And that is all support and resistance levels are. Yeah, is that they are past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future right that have failed to work and then traders are just trading the other side of that area yeah but also remember the most important bit is that while traders who trade tend to trade support and resistance areas yeah are getting in here 
the most important thing is that if we're taking this as an expensive area, higher highs, because prices couldn't push higher than whatever this price was here, but the origin of the move up, yeah, the higher low is a proven bargain area, then support and resistance isn't always the best area when we're choosing bargains because everyone knows the mantra, the cliche, buy low, sell high. Is this low? Sometimes, a lot of times when, if you guys know about Fibonacci, you're pulling a Fibonacci from a low to a high. You're choosing a leg, aren't you? Choosing a swing, right? And all Fibonacci is, is just looking at the discount. So sometimes you get a 38.2% yeah, discount. Some traders will look at the 50%. Yeah, this might be 50% discount from the high to the low. That's why traders trade pullbacks. And that's not to say that support and resistance doesn't work. Of course it does. It can work. And it does work on a price chart. But if you're looking at buying at the best areas, you want to look for the bargain basement. Even the 61.8%. Yeah. Fibonacci is a nice discount. It's a very nice discount, but it's not the best. If this was a bargain here, yeah, and prices make their way down to a demand zone then that's going to be the best area to look for a buy trade if we know fundamentally because prices are driven by really three things fundamentals risk sentiment yeah so risk sentiment risk on and risk off and liquidity right outside of that i don't think there's really anything that markets are driven by Fundamental analysis, which determines value, risk sentiment, safe haven plays, as, and uh, risk tolerance, and the amount of liquidity that there is for prices to move higher or lower. Yeah. So, what can we do, right? What can we do um, to potentially trade both at the uh, same time? So combining support and resistance with supply and demand zones. That's really what we're looking to do. So let me draw that out for you, right? So what you wanna see is, you wanna see something like this, yeah? All right. Remember higher highs and higher lows are areas where, you know, of the best demand zone. So if you're we, if in the demand zone, that would be where it is, yeah? So higher highs, higher lows, and then you're waiting for a new high. Now, again, once a new high is made, that's your level of demand or the best area to look for buy trades. And then what you wanna do is when prices come back down to this area, is combine that with previous support and resistance. So remember, this was a failed. This is a this was a supply zone, yeah. Which traders would call, you know, resistance. It failed here. Traders would normally get in here. Not supply and demand traders. We're looking for proof, right? Proof of value first. We need the market to prove that there is strong demand here. That's what we want. I mean, we, we can only do that if prices start to make new highs or what would be considered an expensive area. So we need the market to prove that that is a strong area of demand. And then when price comes back to this area here, then not only do we look to potentially buy if our fundamental and uh, risk sentiment analysis says so but then we can also look to combine what other areas of uh, support and resistance or failed supply zones in this case yeah because we know other traders are looking at trading this area right because any trader that's looking at resistance potential support is going to be looking here as well so we have not only understanding the bigger picture and understanding that we want to be buyers here, yeah. So buy orders of demand. We're also going to have other traders who trade support and resistance, looking at doing what, buying as well, yeah. 
So there could be new traders entering into here who are looking to the left and understanding that this is a level of what they term to be support and resistance when pretty much support and resistance is supply and demand. Yeah. So that's our order equation confluence because you've got to think to yourself from a technical analysis perspective, why would there be more supply here than demand? Because if there was more supply there, then prices would, you know, would, would drop. Yeah. None of us truly ever know because the market is a probabilities game, right? But from a technical analysis perspective, and if you know we're looking to buy anywhere, this makes sense, understanding how market participants enter the market. Technically, this area here, yeah, which would be, again, resistance, is not the best area to look for a trade. Doesn't matter if prices go higher. Good for them, yeah, good for those traders. What we need to do is have proven proof of value. Yeah, if, we're, if I'm going to the shop, I don't wanna, if I wanna get a discount, I'm not looking to get a 20 or 30% discount. Half price is nice, but I want the absolute bargain. And you should too, yeah? So let's um, look at this on a price chart. Let's go to gold and look at this on the, on the gold price chart. So on this price chart of gold, um, we've got what traders would typically term as uh, support and resistance, right? So you've got a level of resistance there, got a level that's been rejected first of all, yeah? And then it's got a level here. And then you've got another bit of rejection there, and then failed resistance becomes what? Potential support, yeah? But now I want you to look at this in, I guess, the, the terms of supply and demand. So let's get rid of this area here. So what we've got is, we've got, let me uh, bring up this. We've got lower highs and lower lows being made. Low, lower high, lower low. So this area becomes an area of supply, yeah. This area becomes an area of supply, and let's just uh, get rid of that for now. Yeah, that whole area now is an area of supply. And let me just uh, turn this to the supply zone, so you can see. Yeah, lower highs, lower lows. When prices come back up here, that is supply the supply zone ended up holding brilliant now as we go forward drag this across yeah and in fact we can move the supply zone up here like that as we go across into this zone here we can see that that level of supply because this would have been an expensive area correct this is what we know to be an expensive area. Why? Because prices couldn't go higher than this. Buyers didn't want to push prices higher. This wasn't seen as an absolute bargain. So we've got more selling, sell orders, more supply orders, which drove the market down. Something's obviously changed. So buyers ended up buying in here, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, right there. Yeah. At each higher high that pushes prices higher, we have to say that that's a potential bargain, that is a potential bargain, that is a potential bargain. Yeah, but let's look at this in the context of demand. So as we go through, and let's uh, just get rid of all this. Right, so traders are now looking at this area, as we pointed out before, as an area of what? support and resistance, correct? Got resistance, resistance, and there should be where traders would be getting involved, somewhere around here. And it does, right? Now, we don't necessarily have the strongest area of demand. There is definitely demand here because there was buyers here and prices were moving higher. Yeah, so there is 
some demand here. Is it a strong area of demand? No, not yet. We want to see proof of value. Prices really need to go above this area here, this area here, before really saying that anything around here is a decent area of demand. Yeah, so not yet, not yet, not yet. Then we start to get prices move to the upside. So now we can start to see that this whole area here now starts to become a nice area of potential strong demand because buyers come into the market and they're pushing prices above what is considered a past expensive area. Yep. So now if prices come back down or if they do come back down, you can start to see where buyers are getting into the market there. Yeah, they're starting to get in now here. So as prices come down into this area, higher highs, higher lows. This was the higher high here in this area. So that was the higher high. And these areas now start to look like what? Higher lows. So then when prices come back down into these areas, this is where you want to look potentially to get long because it was a proven bargain here back in April, which led to a new high. So now it's about trying to get involved in where we are currently today. Yeah, with the combination of what? Resistance, resistance, turn to what? Support, support. So this was a past supply zone, past supply zone that had been, if we take this area here, sorry. Yeah, that had been projected into the future and is acting as what now? Support. So whenever you uh, see anyone else talk about supply and the difference between supply and demand and support and resistance, this is the definitive video. You will probably won't find anything else like this on YouTube. Uh, my ideas are my own, original, um, and if anyone has, um, you know, uh, the same idea, then great for them. But uh, this is original thought, and this is what makes sense to me logically, and is what's, what has made sense to me for a number of years. Yeah, so there is no difference. The search is over. You don't need to, uh, um, you know, worry about it anymore as far as the difference. You can trade both. A lot of traders tend to say one or the other is 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 better. It, one isn't necessarily better than the other because they're both the same. It's just the approach and how you look at the market. Yeah, and why there's likely to be more demand here. Yeah, so why is there likely to be more demand in this area? Because trade, first of all, we know that it's a bargain area because we made a new high. Yeah, made a new high. So potential bargain. We as supply and demand traders, demand traders are gonna get in here, but then you've also got the added confluence of support and resistance traders who are looking at that level, looking to the left, looking to get involved in here as well so more buying yeah i must add a caveat to this though is that the more a level is touched the weaker it becomes yeah the weaker it becomes so what you really want to get involved in is the fresher areas of demand yeah fresh areas of demand you know first areas are the best areas to look for um uh, buy trades the more times you know three four touches of a level um, the less um, successful or the chances of success um, it actually uh, becomes and you can back test that if you want to anyways guys that brings me to the end of this video um, hope you enjoyed it hope you found this useful as well and until the next video take care